recently I've bought a few bits and bobs with the offers on to get the job done. Anyway, it's taking me back to thinking about the tools that I wish I'd had right from the start. And that's what this video is all about. It might come as a surprise to you that I'm not obsessed with power tools. When I first started doing DIY, I didn't have a workshop, not even a workbench. I probably just used a kitchen table and I didn't even clamp anything down. Anyway, it took a while for a lot of your comments to sink in that I should get saw horses at least. And that's the first thing I would absolutely recommend. I probably built some maybe about a year into my DIY journey. And you can actually make some of these yourself. I'll leave a video link below or just buy some that are collapsible. I wish these were, but these are really strong and they were really cheap. By the way, you'll find affiliate links below, but just treat this as a loose guide. Number two is the pocket hole jig. Again, this is something probably two years it took me to buy. And that's because of the price. It was about 50 quid. And this one, I think you can do pocket holes for 16 mil to 38 mil thick. The one for bigger timber is double the price. So I just couldn't commit to buying that. But the reason I loved this, and I say loved, I still love it, it's really useful, is that you can make furniture. A beginner can make furniture within an hour or two. I did a coffee table a couple of years ago and it took me probably about two hours, it was that quick. The reason I'm hesitant about it is I think it's not real carpentry. So every time I come to build a project, I think, actually, is there another way I could do this instead because I feel like cheating. So when I did my dog bed a couple of months ago, I decided to do dowel joinery instead. Pocket hole jigs leave quite big gouges because it drills on an angle. But this is the only one I've ever used. There's lots of other ones, much cheaper ones where you've got to clamp it. This has a clamp on it, but if you're an absolute beginner, then I think this is really easy to use. Number two is a router. This is a palm router. I absolutely love using this because you can create different profiles. Most of the time I'll use a 45 degree chamfer router bit just to take sharp edges off. It's easier than sanding. It's a little bit on the noisy side. I've used a core box router bit doing a radiator cover and there's absolutely loads. You can get a biscuit joiner. The only thing I would say is I've been waiting for a battery powered one. The cable can get a little bit on the irritating side. Speaking of cables though, I find this an absolute pain in the backside to get it in the right order to close drives me insane. Hold on. It's just, I think it's going to break. No, I'm not doing it. And if you're getting that, definitely treat yourself to some router bits. Make sure that they're the right size. These are a quarter inch to fit the palm router. Next one is clamps. Nearly hit myself in the face. You can never have enough clamps. And quite often, if I'm doing a job, I don't think ahead that I actually need them. And sometimes I've needed to clamp pieces to create a shelf so I can work on my own. I like these ones because they're a quick release one. They're not the cheapest and sash clamps. I've got one meter, 1.2 meter long sash clamps. I probably should get some better ones though, some easy release ones, but they're really useful for giant projects. The next thing is my works compact saw. It's battery powered. It's so lightweight. And it's great for cutting sheet material, or even if you don't have a table saw, you can screw a piece down to an offcut, a chunky offcut, and then rip what you need down. I've often done that. I do have a battery powered circular saw. The only reason I don't use it as much is because it's heavier. The next thing is a vise. I wish I bought one of these sooner, just to free up my hands drilling dowel joinery or cutting things up. The other thing that I wish I'd bought sooner is calipers. The amount of times I've dropped screws and things on the floor, bolts, and I've had to measure them or check to see a cut to see what's accurate. I've been trying to get some runners done for my table saw and just checking for drill bits to make sure you're finding the right size before you pre-drill and then screw an object together. The next thing on my list is Bluetooth ear defenders. The amount of people that have said, why are you wearing those if you're just using a handsaw? Because I'm listening to music or I'm listening to a podcast or an audio book and they are really comfortable. In fact, I even wear these while editing at my desk or even a dog walk just as earmuffs because it's really cold outside right now. I think they're meant to last about 38 hours. They last me about two or three weeks or maybe more, but I am wearing them 
almost all the time, apart from in the bath. The other thing that I've put on this list, and I've only just ordered it this week, is a bandsaw. I've used the one at my dad's a couple of times, but there's certain things that a jigsaw can't do because clamps are getting in the way. And I think it's gonna be a lot more versatile and safer than a table saw and quieter. I've ordered mine from Aldi, it's a Ferrex model, and it might actually be out of stock now. It's a limited range each year. I'd recommend watching Peter Millard's review on it from last year. And uh, yeah, what would you put on the list?